five. But when I loaded all of the cells in the map and tried playing the game, it literally powered my new machine off. So I've got a, a, a Raptor Core i9, I got 64 gigs of RAM, uh, and uh, my system depowered itself. So uh, I think I, I've been struggling with the RAM. I think the RAM's bad. So um, I'm probably going to return that and get more RAM. But in the meantime, I'm not going to run that again. It, uh, <laughs> it hard, hard reset my machine. So uh, a question was asked, how do, you, uh, how do you get assets for your game without spending money? And so there's, uh, there's three easy answers to that. Um, the first is, of course, you know, always stay on top of the, the free stuff that Epic gives out, right? And everything that you get on the Epic Game Store, if you purchase stuff, uh, of course that costs money, um, but they usually have pretty high quality stuff come out for free every month. So if you go over to the asset marketplace here, uh, there's a ton of great stuff in here. And the whole point of this is like, if you want to, if you're making like some Subnautica game or something like that, then like here's some, you know, art and you can pay them 25 bucks and then you can use it in your game. Okay. Uh, so the Epic Game Store marketplace and always check the free for the month collection. I've been looking at the animated rain. That's actually really cool stuff. Let me add that to fall 2022 and see if I can do something with it. Oh, it's already in there. Sweet. Um, so uh, really cool stuff here. I'm going to mess with that. I've been, I have been messing with it for a while. Uh, another source is Humble Bundles. So uh, Humble Bundles have, let's see, actually I can just show you the downloaded version of them here. Uh, so C Drive, uh, Unreal Projects. Art assets, uh, game textures. Uh, so there's, um, let's see here, Raptor Core, Avatar, let's see here. Uh, music, maybe. Yeah. So these are all albums of music, right? So each one of these things is like a gig of music, right? So if I want to have uh, some sort of reggae music in my, um, in my game, I can extract it and um, hold that over there so you can see what's happening. So I'm extracting the reggae soundtrack and I get all these things off Humble Bundle. And so basically they're all free to use in your, in your video game. Uh, and then we've got get ready. I don't know. So all this art here, you know, I can, I can use. And so Humble Bundle, uh, they come out with a game dev art pack, music pack, um, like, every two, three weeks, something like that. So this is a great place. And I, I've got on my computer here, I've got just so many different humble bundles of stuff. And a lot of the stuff is the things you don't really, you don't really think about. So games, books, software, let's see if software has it. Mega Music Maker, low poly 3D bundle, um, real world and real bundle. So let's, what are you guys interested in? The low poly or the uh, realistic? You guys tell me. How about now? Low poly it is. Okay, so we click on that. And then they have different sizes of bundles. It's $1 and you get all this stuff. So like, even if you're like a poor college student, like you can afford a dollar. It's $20, which again, is starting to get into the pricey territory for all this stuff. And if you want the whole set, it is $25. And you get 29 bundles of art and stuff like that. So. You can look at the um, uh, different things that are inside of there. Creatures, humans, uh, characters, fantasy weapons. And so basically this will just flesh out your game, right? Because if you're making like some sort of like medieval game and you want to go with that low poly aesthetic, then uh, which kind of looks a lot like Warcraft 3, doesn't it, huh? <laughs> doesn't it? Hmm. You know how I was saying earlier that, uh, <laughs> that some of my art packs were clearly inspired by Warcraft. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So there's one for sale right now. Inspired by... Uh, 
Warcraft. Uh, probably, yeah, it looks a lot like the undead. race in world of warcraft or warcraft 3 um yeah so if that's if that's your cup of tea you can buy that and then you get like 30 asset packs for a really really low cheap price this oh yeah uh, this i was looking at actually so this is not actually realistic graphics this is real world so this is a engine that um you don't actually get it so like i, I didn't actually buy this package because it's expensive for one thing, it's thirty five bucks, and it's all it's only like a three day, a three week, three month trial, and then another three month voucher on top of that. So you're not actually getting the license uh, for thirty five dollars. You're getting a essentially a three month trial and a three month ex extension on it with a couple art packs. And so the art packs kind of look cool, but this is useful if you want to make like your own Pokemon Go or um, uh, Ingress or. Uh, one of those other games where it uses the GPS location that you're at. And so this is an engine that allows you to tie into Unreal Engine 4, not 5. They don't have a uh, Unreal 5 yet, but this is actually like your, you know, your hometown. These, this is your street, you know. And so you can feed real world location data into Unreal Engine. And then you can make a mobile game. That's obviously the Bridge, uh, not Bridge Cleef, yeah, it's the... Um, uh, it's Dubai, but uh, uh, it's like the Palm. Did you guys see that? Uh, see, there. Yeah. So that's real life, right? And then in the game, that's what it looks like. It's the... Um, it's just called Palm Island. Okay, it's just called the Palm Island. I thought there was something more fancy than that. Okay, cool. <laughs> So yeah, so with these bundles, uh, in, in this case, I mean, they're, they're, I think they have a free trial. So you actually, I think you're actually paying money for something you can actually get for free. But they don't have Unreal Engine 5 support, so um, I didn't buy it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for these things because I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I love, I love just downloading things and playing with it and just trying to see what I can make. Uh, but without Unreal Engine 5 support, I'm kind of like, eh. So, uh, right, so Asset Store, Humble Bundle, and then the third bit of advice that I have for you is the, uh, there's all sorts of free game assets out there, right? So Free Sounds is one we looked at before. And um, Free Sound, sorry, it's singular, not plural. And you basically have to log in. That's that's the only trick with freesound.org is that you have to be logged in to download things. That's it. Um, and then every time you find a, a, a wave file you like, then you have to check the license, okay? So it's a little bit more annoying than the Humble Bundles because with the Humble Bundles or with the Asset Store, it's yours to use. Like you want, you handed money to them, you can use the sound and art and graphics. Um, you want to have a health bar that looks cool, you can download art assets that make your health bar look like dripping blood or uh, you know put a wooden frame around your character portrait or things like that. When you go to websites like this, you have to like, click on the license and make sure you're not violating the license, right? So this has no copyright. So you can just use it however you want. No problem, you don't owe them any money, okay? Uh, but like if we, uh, let's log in. Uh, a lot of Creative Commons works will have um, like attribution, you know, on it. So let's see here, uh, laser, laser beam. Heavy laser cannon. Let's see. So you can you can search right here. Yeah. So you can search for which kind of license it's on, right? You cannot use these for any commercial game premieres. Right? Any of these things that are licensed as non-commercial, uh, you cannot use them for commercial purposes. Right? So you can't use them for your game. So you have to like every time you do a search, you have to like kind of look at these things and pay attention. And if it's attribution, then you have to make a note, right? That this, uh, you know, you got this laser beam sound from uh, Flo Rayen. Uh, you have to, <laughs> that, that thing, wow, one and a half stars. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Wow, okay. Um, it sounds a bit like a laser room. It hurts.
It sounds like someone screwed me right on the mail. This cost me near a point to go to your check. Ever heard of offer? This is my ears are bleeding. <laughs> so if you want to use that in your game and you can you can keep your uh, your lunch down long enough to, to listen to it. Like I, I literally think I just had a stroke there listening to it. Uh, then you have to give credit to Flow Ram. Okay, so um attribution means you must give them credit for using their stuff in, in their game. Okay. Um so you gotta be careful. Okay. Same thing like uh like I was saying like a uh like it was um Resident Evil It was village, yeah. Okay. So um cookies why Monster design? No, not that one. Uh, Resident Evil 4? No, we'll go away. Uh, yeah, so basically, um, the they found like places where Capcom was stealing artwork, essentially, without paying people for, um, for their work. And these are not free to use. And so if you release a major title, then people will stare at the parts of mirrors and buckles and things like that and be like, I made that, you know? And so like, look, the thing here is the thing here. And you know, look at how similar it is and, and they'll come after you. So, um, yeah, so you gotta be careful of that stuff. And so if you go to images, um, on Google image search, then you can, uh, tools, usage rights, creative commons license. And so Google image search, allows you to find images that are uh, uh, Creative Commons, right? And uh, so if you click on that, then you can come down here, uh, licensing. It's Creative Commons by attribution 2.0, okay? So uh, personality rights, you might have to be careful with this, right? So. Uh, you might not be able to actually use this, right? So that that's the point, is that when you, whenever you're doing these image searches, you need to uh, make sure you are searching for Creative Commons stuff and then make a note of it and put it into your credits that you've used their stuff. And it's kind of a pain. Like, you can do it, but it's just kind of a pain. There's more bookkeeping. And if, if you forget, then now you're, you know, essentially, you know, stealing people's artwork without crediting them because all they really wanted for their artwork is to um, to get credit and then you used it in your AAA game Ramirez and didn't give them credit and now they're mad. And so um, yeah, honestly just the, the free the free stuff is um, the, or the humble, humble bundles or the marketplace stuff is, is really the way to go. But tons of resources out there for free. Okay. And uh, tons and 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 tons of stuff out there for free. So um, there's, it's in fact so easy to get free stuff that there is um, a whole genre of game category on Steam that you know people call like shovelware, where basically they will purchase um, you know the art asset to a barn or something for five bucks. And they purchase some zombies for like five bucks, and then they slap uh, a game together in less than twenty-four hours, and you have two guns to choose from, and you've got zombies that spawn in this barn, and you shoot them, and it has a score that ticks up, and that's the entire game, and uh, they charge two dollars for it, you know, and then they sell three hundred copies, and they just made five hundred bucks in a day. Not bad. You know, it's absolute garbage. This is all free stuff, by the way. I'm still scrolling. You know what I mean? Like, this is all free stuff. Like, you cannot underestimate just how much free stuff there is available out there. So, uh, I know one of you is doing a platform right now, so I just randomly landed on this. Tile sets, uh, download. You can pay the money if you want. Um, so, there you go. So, that's, that's my little spiel on that. So if you want um, every Roblox game ever, it's funny. 
Asset flips. Yeah, yeah. That is what they're called. Um, and they're kind of the bane of Steam, because, like, you're trying to find something, like, you just keep turning up all this shovelware stuff, you know, where, like, people just slap something together and call it Zombie Barn Festival, and you're trying to find, like, you know, Wolfenstein zombie mode or something, and you're just, like, getting these, like, hits for things that, you know, you don't, that somebody just literally put a couple hours of work into, you know? So, uh, but that's that's just how easy it is to get assets in your game. So if you want to make a AAA game, you're not going to. You're not, you're not. Like, like there's a reason why AAA games are AAA games. It's because you have hundreds of people working on the game for hundreds of hours, and they are experienced people, and they know what they're doing, and they make these giant, intricate, large worlds with, like, you know, Skyrim, you know, there's dungeons and bandits and, like, it, like the scope of a AAA game, you just can't, you can't compete on that. Uh, but if you just, like, kind of want to get a game together and have assets you can get and you've got an idea and things like that, there's plenty of room in the indie space to be able to make some really cool games. Um, just don't try to, don't try to compete on the scope, right? Um, and the scale of a AAA studio. Uh, my kid will be like, I'm trying to play this word bridge game. I saw on YouTube search for it, find 99,000 word bridge games. Yeah. Um, <laughs> gotten burned on mystery key packs on steam because of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it, the, the, the mobile game world is also just absolute garbage. Um, like it, it really is like, You know, for one thing, there's just, like, too many apps, right? So, like, nobody will find your app. It's like, as a developer, like, nobody is going to find your app. Like, Wordle was, like, a one out of a million shot, you know, that it exploded. Because there's just tons of, like, tiny little games that people release all the time. And they get no publicity, and nobody plays them. And, it like, you're, you're probably not even going to make back your 100 bucks a year uh, membership fee for, like, Apple developer. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just not a good space for indie developers, I don't think. Um, I mean, people, I guess, do make money on it, but, like, you know, it's, uh, and all the advertising in mobile games just drives me crazy. It really does. Like, you know, I was playing, a, I was at a fencing tournament on uh, Sunday. We're seeing their board because we're waiting for the pool results to come in and go into single eliminations. And so we're like, all right, let's play Connect Four, right? And so all the Connect Four games are ad supported. It's like, okay, fine, whatever. You know, you have a little thing at the bottom. But then after our first game, it went full screen and there was no X button and there's no close button. No matter where you clicked on it, it took you to the buy page for Galaga, the app, or something like that. Like there was no way of getting out of it. And so I forced quit the game and gave it a one star on Google Play. and you know, downloaded a different Connect 4. And that one had ads on it too, but at least it didn't take over the screen. So that's a win, I guess. Um, there are some gyms on mobile. Um, yeah, tell me. Because, like, I can't really think of any mobile games ever that I would say are good. <laughs> like, I, I, I still play Pokemon Go, kind of. Um, but, like... Uh, I consider Pokemon Go an exercise app. I don't consider it a game, really. Uh, Clash of Clans, okay. Um, Pokemon Unite, the the yeah. But like, man, it it is uh you know, people will just do shovelware games on mobile all over the place. Uh, too many ads. It's just it's just a rough environment to be developing in. And so like, if you want to be an indie game developer, like. I think honestly, PC is probably easier than than mobile, um, just because, like, if you're a AAA studio, you can pay for the advertising to get people to start playing your game, and then you you're trending now. Now you're on the top, you know, ten list. Now the Google Play algorithm is recommending that you play Pokemon Unite because you've played these other games. Uh, once you get the ball rolling, yeah, there's lots of money in mobile. Like, don't get me wrong. Just as an indie developer, it's like. How much of your money do you want to spend? Do you want to spend $100,000 marketing your game? Because I don't. <laughs> I, I like having my $100,000 and not spending it on marketing on a crapshoot, you know? So, 
Um, interesting, interesting. Yeah, Monument Valley, interesting. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, my, my advice to you guys in any event is, like, I don't, I don't think that indie is, is actually good for people that don't have, um, like, a complete knowledge base for game development. Because when you're indie, you're doing everything yourself. Right, so sure you can asset store like you know UE elements, so you've got like a a cool skull around your health bar or something like that. Like you can asset store some stuff, but you have you're responsible for all the art direction, the color palette, the foley in the game, the uh, 3D modeling. Uh, if you're not just getting everything from the asset store, the animations, the rigging, the level design all of the props in the world, the foliage, the water, like everything is uh, is on you. And you have to, I think, have a certain amount of skill. Like I've looked at analyses of like successful indie developers and like somewhere around zero of them are new people starting out. You know, like it's a very small percentage. Like these successful indie developers are people that have worked in the games industry for like, you know, five years, seven years, 10 years, something like that. And then like, if you look at the curve of like success, you know, like uh, money sold versus years of experience developing, like the new indie developers make like all, pretty much nothing. Like it's it's people that work at the AAA studios, they get their skill set together, then they go and they start their own game studio that that have a chance of, of, of winning. So do everything, get money, no share money. Yeah, it's true. Like when, when you run your own company, you get to keep everything. That's one of the reasons why I started my own business. It's like, for one thing, I like my boss, me. And the other thing, like all the money that the company makes, I get to keep, you know? I mean, there's business expenses and I have to pay other people and stuff like that. But it's, it's nice when, you know, you can actually keep the money that you your product has made rather than, you know, the company paying you an hourly wage and then they, you know, they get all the upside on it. So, uh, uh, sculpting and sorting had enough to be says for this for class and you just run my priorities. She's use a cone of flat cylinder. That's funny. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's fair. Um, although I don't know, Megan, you've been really killing it this semester. So, you know, um, I, I, like, like I'm, I'm not telling you to actually sculpt something because that's way overkill. I'm just saying like coming from you, I would not, I would not be surprised because you, you've been doing a really fantastic job all, all semester. So, um, but yeah, like I, I just wanted to be a game programmer, you know, and so I use asset, you know, uh, packs and, and things like that because I don't want to be responsible for drawing a picture of a mouse or something like that you know like that's just not not what i signed up for i want to be writing game code and that's what we're going to be talking about for the next half hour or so okay so i'm going to stop this now long story short asset packs if, if you're like me you're just a lone you know programmer developer making games for fun asset packs the way to go